So I work in Tradence. I'm a principal in Tradence. What it means is that I own the delivery for a large vertical. So I head retail and CPG. So what I do is that I have a large team. I ensure that the customer's business problems are solved using data and we are able to drive business value and business impact. Essentially, you're proving the value of data. And that is all about data science today. What we see today is that you have a lot of data. How do you derive value from data? And the way you do is that you derive insights, and that insight should be driving business actions. And that will drive the business value. So I've been spending about um, 22 years now, yeah, it's more than two decades, um, on data science across multiple industries. And what I feel very good about is that I spent time about 12 years in the US working with the business users. So I understand that how the business problem starts, then how do you conceptualize the solution? What kind of data do you use? What's the approach? And then how do you translate back to the business users so that they can really consume it. And once you consume, that's when the business value is derived. So yeah, I've been working in this space uh, for across industries, retail, CPG, some financial services, some industrials as well. So you hear this AI, ML, um, it's pretty buzzwords. I see that you know, everywhere on the street you talk about data science, AI, ML. I think what makes AI ML real is that not the concept, but how do I tie this to a specific business problem? Now, um, once you tie to the business problem, the algorithm is not the key. The algorithm is one small part of the overall value chain. I imagine like algorithm in the center and there is a wrapper around it. The wrapper is about data collection, what kind of data you have, um, how do you pipeline them into the algorithm? How fast can you use the algorithm? And then how do you drive adoption? We call last mile adoption. It's very important for the business users to use the insights in a consistent manner, right? So what future I see is that um, the services, what we focus today, that we get a problem, we write a custom code in Python, in R, using some technology, using some algorithm, that might reduce. You'll have some data product. You'll have a platform that will have the pipeline from the data sources. And then you have a product that will drive your algorithm, run your algorithm, pretty much black box. And then you have the users who'd be using this output of the AI ML system and drive consumption. In my mind, the role that will be very important to make it happen, and I call to make AI ML real, the role that will make it work is called translator role, translator. So I understand the algorithm lingo, I understand the technology, I understand the business language, and I can communicate what actions to be taken based on these insights. So the more and more the world is getting used to data science and AI ML becomes normal, commonplace, I think that this will be scaled and the role that will prevalent and scale is called translator role. And a lot of the backend processing would be all productized to platform. So as I was talking to just you know few uh, some time back, uh, half an hour back, we were having this panel, you know, panel conversation. So it's all about that there is a big need. We all know that AI jobs are hot. Right? There are a lot of jobs. And there are a lot of people who are interested in AI jobs. There are a lot of training curriculum today. Then where is the gap? The gap is the data science is not only one skill. It has got multiple skills. Finding one person, in, uh, one person with all the skills, data engineering, domain, algorithm, then business consulting, uh, communication, change management, all these are not possible. So what we should do is that instead of a team of data scientists, we should build a data science team. That's scalable, right? So how do, you, uh, how do we kind of groom talent? Um, there are two aspects. One is hard skills, hard skills. That's like 
data engineering or math or business, they're hard skills. And there are soft skills. That's communications. How do you work with team? Your emotional quotient, EQ, right? Now, it's very hard to often develop that or teach it. In my mind, the EQ has to be learned and not taught. Sometimes the culture and the environment can enable that learning. So what we do is that we hire talent with certain uh, you know, checks, like you can communicate well, and you are curious. You know basics of progr programming. You know basics of math. With that, we hire the talent. How do we check that you know basics of math? Puzzle, we give a puzzle. Or a case study, right? Guestimate. We hire them, and they're fresh. Then we have a two-month training program. That's pretty elaborate. We talk about some basic technology, problem solving, some basics of math, we train that. And then we have two months hands-on project experience. Put them into a project, and then train them in the project like live project and they kind of mature with that over time they learn about few things like how do you communicate with the business user how do you take a very high level business problem for example uh, how is your sales doing today how can i improve my sales very broad question can you break it down into multiple solvable problems so the structure problem solving you learn on the job and we also have ongoing trainings we also recommend some of those online courses, some of the courses outside as well. We also drive some in-house training as well. I think it's a multitude of training programs, but in the end, it's the individual's you know, willingness to learn and how do you keep yourself up to date.